What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher with the Duran. And with me today, I have Mr. Peter Lavelle from RT's Crosstalk. And we are going to be discussing the Democrats losing Russia proposition. Peter, how are things? I see a, a beautiful uh, back background. Uh, Let me see. You're sitting. Let, me get... Let me stand up here. All right, I'm on one of the most famous streets in Moscow, right next to the Kremlin. So you're guaranteed that Putin's going to be listening. Okay. All right, <laughs> fantastic. So Peter, you, you shared with me an article uh, this morning um, on uh, Consortium News by Norman Solomon, which in a nutshell outlines how the Democrats' Russia, Russia, Russia campaign strategy is boomeranging against them. And um, they've gone, I believe, from a 12-point lead uh, heading into the midterms in 2018 to now around a four-point margin, which is which is in the in the margin of, uh, of error. error. And that was from the latest uh, Real Clear uh, Politics poll. Uh, I believe that was last week. So, Peter, elaborate uh, for all our viewers. Why are the Democrats persistent on this Russia um, narrative? And are they going to continue to go down this road, given the fact that their poll numbers are starting to plummet? Well, um, num first of all, they don't have any other message. OK, they decided this uh, after the uh, defeat of Hillary Clinton, that they're going to stick with this. Uh, they never had a postmortem, though other people have had postmortems, but the DNC itself has not done that. Um, uh, they, it, it, they went with it because it would taint Trump, would be Trump. But if you look at the poll numbers, it has almost nothing to do with Trump. It has to do with their own message. I mean, even people that are going to vote Republican that they say don't like Trump. So <laughs> get around that, okay? And the Democrats can't do that. They haven't uh, uh, posited any kind of policy that would attract the base. And most importantly, well, the two most important issues is that they haven't addressed the Bernie Sanders issue still. Okay, um, millennials, they're, look, the DNC is afraid of millennials. They're not even attracting them. They're afraid of them. Okay, um, the, 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 the leadership, I mean, I guess Nancy Pelosi is going to still hang around to see if she can get that gavel. Okay. Why are they afraid of millennials? Well, what, what's, your, what's the reason behind that? Because they pull the party to the left. You know, the, the, the DNC, these people, they're corporatists. They're no different than the Republicans. No, they're not. They're all the same. You know, I, I, and, you know, just to be clear to our viewers, I'm not cheering for the Republicans, not for the, the RNC. No way. OK, um, I'm not I'm, I'm against the status quo. That's what Trump is all about, though. I have a lot of issues with the president, a lot. Um, um, the Bernie, the Bernie Sanders issue and the millennials is so very important. Now, what Norman Solomon didn't mention in this article, which I think is really good, is that the media. The media has played this card too. Anti-Trump, Russia, 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 Stormy Daniels, uh, creepy porn lawyer. Um, you know, people don't care. They don't care. It doesn't change their lives. It doesn't make their lives better. And it's one of the things that they're not going to change. I mean, there's kind of a uh, an irony now being played that we're six months out from the midterms. Do they have time to change gears? Oh, or maybe they should start hoping that Mueller finishes his, re his report because the report worked to their advantage, right? Because it kept it in the headlines. But now, if it's if he doesn't get his report out soon, they're going to be stuck with it. And you know, I think everyone watching this, and you and I, you know, I've known you a long time. If there was anything out there, it would have been leaked. Okay, so we're going to find out about the dirty laundry of other people. Probably. OK. Uh, are some people going to get in trouble? Yes. But the more they do this, the more they're going to be looking at the corruption at the DOJ and the FBI. OK, that's the ultimate boomerang. All right. The more you dig, the more you find out the deep state was deeply involved, like a third world country in the domestic politics of the country. So, you know, um, but this this poll was so very interesting. to I me. Mean, Norman Solomon's article is really spot on. And he's a man of the left. OK, yeah. he's a man of the left. But it, it really shows that the, the messaging of the Democrats of the mainstream, there's no difference between the two, okay? Um, it has totally failed. It has totally failed to galvanize uh, of the Democratic Party. Now, the, and it has also done uh, the opposite. It has actually galvanized Trump's base. Because I, I know Trump's base really well, okay? I grew up in the Midwest, okay? 
I'm going to have a chocolate chip cookie. So, <laughs> thank you, here. And you can put the coffee right there. You can take the boy out of America, but you can't take. There you go. There you go. Chocolate chip cookie in uh, in the center of Moscow. I like it. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> the beauty. Very nice. No. Okay, so um, what I'm saying is, is that even though the, the Democratic base is very disaffected because they want something new, they want to move to the left, um, uh, the, the, the deep-pocketed uh, donors don't want to go in that direction. They like the status quo. They, they like the, 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 uh, the corporate nature of the party. Um, but the, the Republican, or Trump base, I should say, will vote in spite of the president. That may sound ironic, but it's true, because the more that Trump is demonized, you can criticize him and critique him. You can do that 24-7. That's fair. Demonizing him is something completely different. I'm from the Midwest. I know how those people think. My father uh, was a died in the wool um, a Reagan supporter, even though Reagan took his benefits away as a veteran against his own interests. But he said, no, he believes in America. And these Democrats, you know, on the, on the acapella goes up the East Coast and the West Coast, they don't get it. They just don't get the American people. And, and the media doesn't get it either. Sure, their bottom line has been pushed up by demonizing Trump, but it's really by the country more and more. And it will keep Trump supporters in line. And, and unfortunately, from my perspective, he is keeping his promises, moving the embassy to Jerusalem. I think it's, I think it's a catastrophe. He made that promise. Out of the Iran deal, I think that's catastrophic. But he promised it. And he's going to be able to go. What is the stump in November? October, November, say, I kept my word, not like those other people. They never do. I did, for better or worse. So these are the dynamics that are in play here. Um, I, I think it's going to be really important to see the last six months before midterms if the Democrats are going to do anything at all. One scintilla of activity to uh, address the, uh, the millennials. That's what's going to tip them over. That's that's the significant view. They haven't done jack. You, you, think, you think they should move more left than the, the Democrats? Because a lot of people that, that say there's, there's a debate where the Democrats should become more progressive, like real progressive. And then there's some people that say, no, the Democrats should move more to the center and they should try to, to woo over some of these undecided... Uh, Americans who, who lean more to the center. But you're actually saying that a good winning Democrat strategy is to go full progressive, but real progressive. Yeah, I'm, okay. This, there, I mean, I'm a conservative, okay? So I shouldn't be giving advice to my adversaries, but I am, okay? Well, if you want to win elections, you have to appeal to the electorate. And the electorate clearly wants to move to the left and more progressive, okay? And I have many progressive friends. I could discuss many of these issues with them in good faith, and they would do with me. It's these corporatist Democrats I don't believe. They're all a pack of liars, and it's all self-interest for them. Um, you know, the Pelosi's and the Schumer people. So, um, yeah, they're, I mean, if they want to win these elections, they're going to have to move to the left. Because um, the, the centrist corporatist Democrats are no different than Republicans, so why would you vote for the, the fake? You're going to vote for the real thing, vote for Republicans. Right. Okay? Right. Uh, it, it, this is what Neil Kinnock did against Margaret Thatcher. You know, he tried to become more conservative, the Labor Party. And then when he got to the polls, people say, you're a fake, you're a fake uh, uh, conservative. You know? You're supposed to be Labor. The same trap is being created right now. The, the biggest takeaway from the article that I got from Donald Solomon is that the Trump element is not that important. It's, it, it's not. You'd think it is because of the MSNBC, you know, that would be the most important, CNN. But, you know, people don't listen to them anymore. They're so irrelevant. They're, they're irrelevant, and you don't get any news from them. Right. And, you know, people get their news by looking around. Is my life better or not? Okay. And that's what's going to make a difference. So if this was a good article to read six months in. I think you should, you know, keep, uh, put a tab on there and see what it's going to be in three months and then right before the midterms. Right. So uh – can you also say that by moving more to the left and becoming true progressive, are there not some commonalities that the progressive left shares with the, I don't want to say the conservative right, but a big portion of the people that voted for Trump? I mean, even though they may be on two opposite sides of the spectrums, I think when you're looking at foreign policy or certain issues, they do overlap. Well, they should overlap. And I think one of the things is that 
this uh, McCarthyite environment that has been created by the corporate media. So if, if you think, well, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to get along with the Russians, okay? And, and progressives would say that. I mean, look, the Wall Street, the Washington Post never said a bad word about the Soviet Union. It's never said anything good about Russia. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. So, so I think this, and this is one of the issues that I talk about with my progressive friends, is that, you know, in 2003, and the run-up to the Iraq War, there were a million people out of the streets. Where are they now? Okay. And, and, and in, with people like, and I call myself, unashamedly, no embarrassment, a paleocon. Um, Pat Buchanan is one of my idols. You know, I'm very open about it. But a Pat Buchanan and a potentially a, a Bernie Sanders could talk, okay? I mean, you could, on the Palestinian issue, Bernie kind of backed off because he was just getting piled on by the mainstream media. That was during the election, okay? But I, don't, I don't know if he's going to run again, but for the, the midterms. You know, people, progressives have to join with conservatives like ourselves and say, this is insanity, what we're seeing in foreign policy. Then it begins there. There's going to be a lot of social policies um, that we're not going to agree on, like abortion. I mean, why do we just, just don't even talk about it? Right? Because there's no way we're going to agree. But on some important issues, we can. And that's what politics is all about. And I think that's important. I, I must say, kind of as a footnote to all this, I'm really disappointed with progressives in so many ways. I really caved in to the corporatists and, um, you know, look at uh, the Young Turks. I mean, you know, a couple of years ago, they were worth listening to because at least it was a kind of a debate, the sparring partners for debate, you know, they're, they're kind of smart TV, and now it's just junk, okay? And it's really shameful. And, and, and that was an alternative that, you know, I thought a lot of people could go to. In many ways, to RT, you know, you can come and you can have a debate, you can duke it out, okay? And unfortunately, that most progressive just went on the wayside because I don't know, because of money, because of fame, because of pressure. I don't know. And then you had guys like Jimmy Dore, who I would consider a, a pretty true progressive, who, who broke away from from the Young Turks. A real hero, real hero. I'm gonna on my next edition of Cross Talk. I'm gonna have Ron uh, Placon on. He's uh, one of Jimmy's yeah. associates. We'll have him on. And just for that very reason, because I want a progressive on my program, and we're going to talk about the what we're kind of talking about right now, um, uh, the role of the media uh, since the election of Trump, uh, where it's gone and where's it going. Where's it going? So, so finally, in closing, Peter, let's look at it from the Republican standpoint or from the Trump standpoint. What do the Republicans have to do now to keep the momentum and go for go for the win? How do they how do they ice it? Well. I think it's really it's uh, it's uh, um, the Republican Party in Congress, which is really the big problem. Um, you know, they, they've thrown Trump into this. You know, it's all about Trump. No, it's not all about Trump. It's a lot all about policy. If you look at a lot of Republicans, it is about policy for them. Um, they have to give him. Look, look, he he wanted the wall. I'm in. I'm kind of ambivalent about the wall, um, but that's what the voters wanted. And when you think of all the money that's being spent on these defense programs, we could build 10 walls, okay? You can't see it's not the money issue, okay? And I, I think that, for unfortunately for Trump, because Trump is a very specific conservative. I don't even know if he's conservative. He's very special. We've never seen anyone like him. I don't think we ever will again, okay? I think he's just a historical figure uh, in good and bad ways. But um, the Republicans need to rally around the president. It's as hard as it is for them to do that, because Trump means more to the base than what members of Congress understand the Republican Party. To be. He's bigger than it, much bigger than it. And a lot of Republicans, old style Republicans, have a hard time grappling with it. But, you know, get over it. By November, it's going to be two years since the 2016 election. So, you know, you've got to get with the program. And it's, it's his program, and it is his party, and you've got to give them that. Yep. And if they don't, then it's a betrayal of, of uh, the hard work that so many people put into um, making the establishment wake up you know, and say, listen, you have to start being accountable to us. You know, we talked on Crosstalk what's going on in Italy. You get the extreme right and the extreme left not because the, the centrist parties are so pathetically unperforming for decades. And now you're getting this. And, and I think it's going to be replicated. I think Republicans, they better um, take into account that you're going to see that, um, that the 
two parties go further and further to the extremes, if the middle can't start waking up to the bread and butter issues of people. You know, we, I, I sent you an article earlier about income um, disparity in the United States and level of poverty. That's pretty scary stuff. And, you know, you got to see if this tax cut is going to work. You need so much social welfare reform. But the Republicans in Congress ain't on board. Okay, immigration reform. You know, the wall in immigration, I mean, isn't it obvious what the American people want? Yeah. That's what the majority of them wanted. And if you go through county by county, not by state by state, but county by county, people overwhelmingly want immigration reform and probably the wall, but certainly immigration. Yeah. And if it's the centrist corporate Republicans can't handle that. The Republican Party, maybe not in the midterms, but in going further, it's going to, it's going to be in big trouble. Yeah. So they need a lot of reform right there. The Democrats, well, they need to take a cold shower, get rid of their, their old leadership, and they better get their act together. Or else, they, they, Historically, as every, anyone probably watching this knows, the first-term president in the first midterms gets a bloody nose. Okay? It's just historical. Okay, it doesn't look like that's going to happen to Trump again. He kind of breaks the mold. Okay, I mean, this is, yeah, well, we didn't expect 2016, so why should we expect 2018? <laughs> that's a true. That is very, very true. And and there's no doubt that if you go county to county, people are not concerned about Russia, nor are they talking about Russia. That's for that's for damn certain. That's why I don't even do the topic anymore. Hardly do it because there's nothing there. There's no there there. Yeah. There's no there there. Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk, sitting in a very sunny, beautiful downtown Moscow, drinking a coffee, having a cookie. Thank you for joining us today and giving us your insight. And joining the nice ladies. Rush, rush All ladies. right, of course. That's Moscow. That's Moscow I'll go back, for you. I'll go back to like my, my first preoccupation. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll see you soon. All right, everybody. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Click the notification bell to get notified every time we push out a new video. And don't forget to visit drnshop.com. Pick yourself up a really cool t-shirt. We have some awesome retro posters and a lot of great merchandise. Peter Lavelle, host of RT's Crosstalk. Everybody, thanks for viewing and stay tuned for our next video. Take care.